and forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. I bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Yes, you are the Lord. Mosai. Yes, you are the Lord. Mosai. Jesus, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Mosai. Yes, you are the Lord. Mosai. Yes, you are the Lord. Ashakata barakata. Mosai. Yes, you are the Lord. Ashakata barakata. Rede broko sete braduka da barande. Shede go jala barukete. Zele konde zubradi kazabrakate. Mosai. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Mosai, yes, you are the Lord. Mosai, Jesus, we give you the praise. Mosai, yes, you are the Lord. Mosai, ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Rakata baraka de regede, ate prokoto sanda baraka de, i baraka de zubra di kada baru zagada. Le kanda brakado shali baruga de ma karebo sakata baruka zegede. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Father, we give you glory this morning. Father, we give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for another day. It says weeping and deals for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Father, we thank you. What are we thank you for your mercy? He says it's by your mercy that we are not consumed. Blessed be your holy name, Ab Father. We give you honor. We join the host of heaven to declare your glory. You are the Almighty. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I call you a saint of days. You reign in eternity. Oh, blessed be your holy name forever, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Good morning to you. The Lord bless you. I want us to go to scripture real quick. The scripture that the Lord brought to my spirit as with navigating the power of divine direction, how to unveil divine duration you see the scripture that says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord and also there's another scripture that says that we should not lean on our own understanding glory to god 
some of you have been in a fix, may have been in a fix. But adventure, God has given you an assignment or God has been, it's been pressing on your mind or your spirit to do something or to go for something or to make a decision. Per adventure, a life-changing decision and you don't know what to do. That's when you begin to unveil the mystery of divine direction. Glory to God. At some point, we all need direction. Not just in our spiritual journey, even physically. Glory to God. Sometimes we need the GPS of our life. Just like when you are making a journey or go, you're going to a new place, you need direction, right? This day and age, we all use um, electronic gadgets, the navigation system. Glory to God. Or you use technology like Siri, Google Maps, to help you navigate your journey. That's how it is with life. Sometimes we need the God's navigate, navigation system to know how to go about life journey. And there was a man in the scripture that God helped with the ministry of men. Glory to God. And so we're going to read First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. When I was about to come online, the scripture was pressed on my mind. Hallelujah. He says, of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Hallelujah. These were a group of men, the mighty men of valor, the men that surrounded David. And of such men, Bible calls them the sons of Issachar, their job was because that they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Hallelujah. You are not confused. You know what to do. God is saying that you will be at the right place at the right time with the right people positioned to help you navigate the assignment to help you navigate the journey of life you will not miss your road glory to god you are right on god's agenda of time glory to god and so we need divine direction we need to understand times and seasons the problem is a whole lot of us don't understand seasons. You have been in a particular place. You have been in a particular situation. Peradventure, even in a particular uh, location or place. And God is saying, this is time for change. God is saying, embrace the new season. This season of your life is over. I'm taking you higher. Glory to God. Don't lose focus. For I have plans for you. Jeremiah says, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you hope and an expected end. God has planned. God is the master plan of our lives. God is the master plan of your purpose, your destiny. It's all mapped out. But there are times a season will shift in your life and you need to embrace it. You need to walk in it. You need to make it a reality. And you need to take a step of faith at that juncture. So these are men that were surrounded by David, that surrounded David. Bible says they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Glory to God. And so this morning, I want you to pay attention because we're going to talk about the power of divine direction. If you need direction, 
if you need an understanding of the assignment that God is giving you, glory to God. The power of divine direction. We all need direction. Supernaturally. Hallelujah. Come with me to scripture in Proverbs. Solomon wrote this proverb in Proverbs chapter 3. I'll read to you verse 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. It says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hallelujah. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, not in some ways. It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That directing got me. In all thy ways. When you acknowledge him, he will show you the way. Hallelujah. This morning, I pray for grace. This morning, I pray for divine understanding. For revelation and knowledge by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we're going to talk to you about something that will transform your life completely. Something that will give you redirect your focus as you navigate your purpose in life. The assignment that you would know what to do, that you will embrace the season of your life. Hallelujah. Many of us navigate through life relying on our own understanding. Relying on our plans, relying on our desires, so our long-term goals, our short-term goals, our ambitions, our visions. Some of us even rely on our skills, our expertise, things we feel that we know, we think that we know. Hallelujah. But when we tune into God's direction, everything will begin to align. Everything will begin to change for the better. This book of Proverbs that we just read says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. Submit to the direction of the Lord. And he will make your paths straight. We are purpose-driven people. We are purpose-driven people. We don't live our lives aimlessly. I will rebuke every vagabond spirit in the name of Jesus. We live a life of purpose. And so there is this need to understand the purpose and the power of divine direction. Divine direction is nothing but the guidance and wisdom that comes directly from God. It is when God leads us, not by our understanding, but by his spirit showing us the path that we should take. The path that leads to life. It is about the spirit. Scripture says the spirit gives life and the flesh profited nothing. When you operate in the flesh, you are leaning 
more on your own understanding. But when we follow divine direction, we align ourselves with God's will. We align ourselves with his timing. We align ourselves with his plans for our lives. So we have to pay close attention to what the Spirit is saying to us. We have to be alert in the Spirit to when to know when the season has changed and to embrace what God is saying to us. And so the importance of seeking God's guidance cannot be overemphasized. Why is this so important? Why is this so paramount to seek God's guidance and direction before you embark on any assignment, before you embark on any journey, life journey, before making that life-changing decisions? Glory to God. You see, if you go across the scripture, the whole Bible, scripture is filled with examples of great men and women who sought God's face, who sought God's guidance, and were blessed because of it. You see, it will get to a point in your life. You can't make a decision on your own. Even the simplest decision, you seek the Lord. What do you think it means when someone, you say that Jesus is the Lord of your life? The Lordship of Jesus reigns. In other words, you're not living on your own. You don't have a life of your own. Whatever decision you're taking, whatever journey you're embarking, I'm not, I'm not just talking about uh, ministry. I'm not just talking about spiritual journey. Life decisions. Choices we make, even as little as relocation, when the God is saying, okay, it's time to move from where you are geographically. Career decisions, relationship decisions, you can't make those on your own. You seek the face of God in prayer and in the word. Think of Moses. Sometimes you don't have you don't have the pieces. You don't know the dots. See, when God is talking to you about an assignment, he doesn't give you the whole scenario. He doesn't give you the full details because he's God. You, what you need is an act of obedience. God does not give you the whole picture when he's pressing on your spirit, when he's telling you to do something, when he's asking you to carry out an assignment. But God wants to see that onset of obedience that you are willing to take on the assignment. Then he will begin to give you clearer vision or peradventure details of what to do. Think of Moses who didn't know how to lead the people out of Egypt. But he relied on God's voice this man developed a relationship, a friendship with God. It was a Herculean task. He didn't know where to begin. Because the people are used to the life in Egypt. They are accustomed to a lifestyle. They see themselves as comfortable in Egypt. So how am I going to be able to break through these people? They are resilient. They are stubborn people. God, I don't think I can do this. But what did he do? He relied on God. Think about David also. David, who prayed before every battle, David was a man of war, a mighty man of war. If you know David, you know that he can face any battle. But there's one thing he always do. 
He seeks God. He seeks God's face. He seeks direction. Every single time he is faced with a battle. Remember the story of Goliath and David? I could go on and on. He won every battle because before he engaged, before he engages in any battle whatsoever, he seeks the Lord for direction. Hallelujah. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of God, a whole Jesus, the Son of the living God sought the Father's will in everything he did. He says, let your will be done. Let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, let your will be done. Jesus was always, he's always seeking to please God, his Father. He aligned his purpose with the will of the Father. Hallelujah. We seek divine direction because, first of all, God knows our future. So we can afford to mess up. We cannot afford to make mistakes. It's costly. It's very costly to go about living your life any kind of way without direction. So you seek divine direction because God knows your future. God knows your, your the blueprint, has the blueprint of your life, of your destiny already mapped out. It says in Isaiah chapter 46, verse number 10. I read that to you. This is just telling that God knows about your future. It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel will stand. My counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Let the counsel of the Lord only stand in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so he says, my purpose will be established and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. This is the Lord speaking. Every single human being that God created, he created him, he created with a purpose. So you're not just, you're not just here by mistake or by chance. You have a life purpose. And the Lord is saying that my purpose will be established and I will do all that pleases me and fulfills my purpose. You see? God has us in his mind, on his mind. He sees the beginning from the end. While we see only a few steps ahead, God knows the entire journey. He knows the entire journey. Do you know another reason why you will need to seek divine direction? Because God's plans are always good. He's a good, good father. He is faithful. He's loving. He's kind to us. God's plans are always good. Jeremiah knew this when he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. This scripture reminds us. He says, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Hallelujah. For I know the plan. This is God speaking. For I know. I know the plans 
Who are we that God is so thoughtful about us? Say, I, the Lord, know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God cannot harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. And see, God directs us for his purpose. Yes, God directs us just to achieve his purpose, the reason why we are here. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. I want you to declare loud and clear that the purpose of God in my life shall be fulfilled. I will fulfill my purpose. I will fulfill my destiny. I'm a child of prophecy. I will fulfill prophecy in the name of Jesus. He says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so his direction aligns us with our true purpose. Glory to God. His direction aligns us with our true purpose. And now the question, the big question is, how do we seek and recognize this divine direction? It begins with prayer. You got to be a man of prayer. Do you know about a man who prayed in the scripture, in the Bible, Daniel? Daniel fulfilled his life of purpose. Daniel prayed round the clock, even in a foreign land. Jesus prayed. He says, men ought always to pray. I have had the privilege of talking to people or cancel people. When they are confused about where to go, steps to take, which way to go, I said, have you considered prayer? That's my to go. Have you prayed about it? Have you prayed about that situation? Have you asked for help? So it begins with prayer. Seeking the face of God through prayer. Prayer is a sign of humility. Prayer is a sign saying, oh God, I can't do it. I surrender. I don't have my own abilities. Help me. We humble ourselves in prayer. James chapter 1, verse number 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Just ask. Even Jesus knew this. He says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock. And that door shall be open. Matthew 7, 7. So I ask you, ask, pray. When we seek God in prayer, we open ourselves up to his direction. So number one is prayer. Number one, number two is the ministry of the word of God. It says, God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. When we immerse ourselves in scripture, we begin to discern his voice and recognize his guidance. God will speak to you through the ministry of the word of God. The word works. 
There is nothing you're going through in this life. There is not a scripture for. The word of God is like an encyclopedia of life. If it is about marriage, if it is about career, whatever the case it is about healing, whatever it is, you find comfort in the word of God. What does the word say? And you apply it to your life. You see, God speaks to all of us. We are his shepherd. We are his the sheep. He's our shepherd. He says, my sheep hears my voice and recognizes it. But you can hear the voice if you're not aligned with the word of God. If you're not aligned to God in his word, God speaks to a whole lot of us through the Holy Scripture. So the scripture will give you guidance. Number three is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us a helper. The Holy Spirit who will guide us into all truth. You see that in John 16 verse 13. The Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts. The Holy Spirit gives us peace and nudges us in the right direction. There's one prayer that I always pray every day. Holy Spirit, help me, direct me, teach me, guide me. Grant me gener uh, 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 revelation and knowledge. Grant me understanding and clarity of mind. Empower me. Holy Spirit is your friend and he's so sweet. Embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so you see the ministry of prayer, the ministry of the word, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then, godly counsel. There's nothing wrong in seeking counsel. Godly counsel from men and women of God. He says, iron sharpened iron. Let's go to scripture. In Proverbs 11, 14, it says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. You see, God will use people around you. God uses people around us. Pastors, mentors, friends, spouses. God can use anyone to confirm his direction in our lives. It could be a prophetic utterance. And you'll be like, oh, wow. This is a confirmation of what I've been praying or seeking, looking for. You could be walking on the road, and you a road that you use every day. The street corner that you go every day. And something will just strike your mind. Perhaps maybe a poster. Maybe a, a signage. All along, that signage has been there. But something, God will use it to minister to you, to speak to you. God can place a man in your life to give you godly counsel, to counsel you. So seek godly counsel in a genuine man and women of God. But you must test the spirit. You must test every spirit. You must ask for the sending of spirit. Glory to God. 
And so what do you benefit? What are the outcomes of following divine direction? Of course, it turns out good. You begin to experience genuine peace. You begin to have confidence. When we know God is guiding us, when you know God is guiding you, you begin to experience a peace. That peace that Paul was talking about in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, that peace that surpasses all understanding. People don't know why you have so much calmness, why you are so peaceful. Because you know you are being led by God. Because you know and you know that you have gotten directives from God. Even in difficult circumstances, even in difficult situations, we can move forward with confidence, knowing that God is with us. So when you seek God's direction, you begin to experience the peace, you begin to have confidence. You begin to experience protection and you begin to have pro divine provision. It comes all along with it. Protection, provision. Psalm 23 verse number 3 reminds us and it says, He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. For whose sake? For his name's sake. And so when we follow God's direction, he provides for us and he protects us from harm, safety. You are in good hands because you're not acting with your own prerogative. The security, there is that safety you experience because you know you're in the safe hands. And then purpose and fulfillment. There's this sense of fulfillment that you begin to have. I guess because you know you're being directed and you know the outcome is going to be positive. And so when you walk in God's will, when you align your life with the will of the Father, it brings a deep sense of fulfillment. We live knowing that we are fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. That's fulfillment. Hallelujah. But then there are obstacles that we face every day to divine direction. I began with self-reliance when you so much believe in yourself. I mean, there's nothing wrong with believing in yourself as a person, having a good self-esteem. But when it gets in the way, when it becomes prideful, that's when it becomes a problem. Self-reliance. And so Proverbs chapter 14, 12 warns, there is a way that seems right. There's a way that appears to be right. But in the end, it leads to death. And so when we lean on our understanding, we miss God's direction. You miss God's plan. You miss God's purpose for your life. So we can rely on ourselves. We don't have power of our own. He it says, it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Who do you think you are? Let God lead you. Let his spirit lead you. So we got to get rid of self-reliance. Number two is disobedience. 
God's direction often requires obedience. Even when it doesn't make sense, sometimes God will speak to you. And you go like, what? God, what are you talking about? How is this even possible? We begin to question things. Instead of acting in obedience, God wants to see obedience. It is your obedience that pleases him. When he says jump, you ask him, how high do you want me to jump, oh God? We don't question things. We act in obedience. Remember Jonah. This man was running from God's direction. I am sending you to Nineveh. I am sending you to Nineveh to deliver my words. He kept running. He kept running. Until God says, oh, I've had enough. You will later do what I say or you learn the hard way until he found himself in the belly of a fish. You can run out all you want from the assignment. You are only delaying yourself. You are only disrupting God's plan for your life. You can run all you want. Some of you are called into various positions, into various offices. You don't want to assume the position. You feel like it's a Herculean task. You're running. Keep running. The only thing disobedience does is delay and disrupt your plan, the plan of God for your life. Glory to God. Fear and doubt, fear of the unknown or doubt in God's plan can keep us from moving in a direction that God is calling us to. God is giving you an assignment. You're beginning to wonder, oh, where are the resources? Oh God, you're telling me to move to Africa for your work. God, you want me to build this infrastructure. God, you want me to start this business. Um, where am I going to start from? You begin to forget that he is the owner of a cattle on a thousand hills. He's the God of the universe. He owns it all. He sponsors his own. Fear is a spirit. And we need to kill that spirit. If you want to move forward, don't doubt the plan of God. God reminds us in Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10, one of my favorite scriptures. He says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. What did he say? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Glory to God. Kill that spirit of fear. Kill that spirit of can't do. You can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Paul knew this. He says, I can do all things. Through Christ, that strengthens me. When that naysaying ideas, when God gives you a project and that spirit of fear wants to creep in, shove it aside. Rebuke it as it's a spirit. Tell yourself, I can do all things 
it did not say, it doesn't say some things, all things. Whatever you put your mind to achieve with the help of God, you can achieve it. 100%. Do not fear, for I am with you. That's an assurance. God is said, I am with you. Every step of the way, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Remember also that it says that the steps of the righteous, the steps of a good man, are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. You are the righteousness of God. Remember how we talked about imputed righteousness? The steps of a good and righteous man directed and established by the Lord. And the Bible says he delights in his way and blesses his path. God delights in your ways. God says, I am blessing your path because you are my righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. So if God leads and directs you, you cannot fall. You cannot make mistakes. Glory to God. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighted in his ways. God delights in the person's way. God takes pleasure in the part of the just because their actions and their choices align with his will. He is pleased when people live according to his guidance. Glory to God. You see, the person who follows God's leading, that man who follows God's leading finds joy and fulfillment in the path that God sets before him or her, trusting that it is the best path, regardless of circumstances. So we're reminded of divine care and guidance. And so this reassures us that our lives, your life, is not random. You're not here by chance or by accident. You're not here without a purpose. Instead, God is saying, God is actively involved in leading you. God is actively involved in the part and parcel of your life. And sometimes his direction might not always be clear or easy to understand. Like I said, God does not give us the whole picture. Otherwise, he's no longer God. He is God all by himself. When God called Abraham, Abraham didn't know what God wants him to do, but he acted in obedience. And today we know the outcome. Hallelujah. God wants to see obedience. Praise God. God is a good God. Even when you don't understand it, even when you, it doesn't make sense or you don't have the clearest picture, 
trust in God's wisdom. Find joy in his guidance, knowing that he knows best. And so this morning, we have made up our mind to seek divine direction because we know the power of divine direction is real and it is available to each of us. God desires to lead us, to guide us, to show us the path that leads to life, the path that leads to joy, the path that leads to fulfillment. Today and every day, let us commit to seeking God's direction in every facet of our lives. Let us begin to trust in his wisdom. Let us begin to lean on his word and be sensitive to the leading of his spirit. And as we do so, I pray that we begin to experience the peace. We will experience the purpose and power that comes from following the divine director of our lives. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so we're going to pray, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you immensely for your divine direction. Spirit of the living God, help us to seek your guidance in all things and to trust you fully and to follow wherever you lead us. May we begin to experience the fullness of your plans for our lives as we walk in step with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. It is well with you. In Jesus' matchless name. Subscribe and share. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful, productive week. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Bye-bye. And I'll see you soon.